Thanks for logging on to MonsterGardens.com. We're here to talk about Mycorrhizae, more specifically the new BioAg VAM product. So you might have used a lot of different products on the in, in the industry, such as the RTI Extreme Gardening Mycos or the Green Grow Mycorrhizae. They sell an ultra fine and a granular. Uh, Plant Success makes the Great White. There's the ZHO or the ZO from Botanicare. Uh, there's the Humboldt Nutrients uh, White Widow. There's Piranha from Advanced Nutrient. There's also liquid mycorrhizae inoculants, such as the Kangaroo from Fox Farm. And plus there's the Plus C from Micro of Life Hydroponics. To make a long story short, there's tons of mycorrhizae, mycorrhizae products on the market, not to mention a lot of mycorrhizae in the soils. However, we're gonna debunk some of the myths that you might not know. Now, the first thing to know is there's a difference between endo and ecto mycorrhizae. With ecto mycorrhizae, it's more for the long-term hardy wood plants, more specifically the trees. Endo mycorrhizae, however, is for more of the short-term plant. It's gonna be for the less woody stock. Endo mycorrhizae is the most popular in this industry because most people aren't growing redwoods in their indoor garden. BioAg did a really good job with making this product because they did not culture these species inside the lab in petri dishes. In fact, they're actually extracted from live plants, which makes the species of mycorrhizae much more readily available, as well as much more alive. You may have noticed in many of the pre-mixed bags, especially the compacted bales that have mycorrhizae in them, they aren't nearly as active as you might think. That's because it's, mycorrhizae is a living species of fungal spores that need to breathe. They need to live in order to populate. So the cool thing about these BioAg products is they've actually been extracted from live plants. These are gonna be the most available, the most alive species of mycorrhizae on the market today. So what makes these different other than the way that they are extracted? So the Glomus introduces is a very popular strain of mycorrhizae that's in many products. However, this one has more than just that particular species. This product, in addition to the Glomus introduces, has six other species. And as we learned in school with Darwinism, the survival of the fittest, it is always good to have a diverse population, especially if ones are more competitive and have a tendency to compete with others to be the most fit. That is why BioAg went ahead and kept trichoderma and species of other trichodermas out of this mix is because recent research has shown that trichoderma is a mycorrhizae species that is a little too aggressive. So in most products that have trichoderma in them, all that's left in the, in the product by the time you purchase it is just the trichoderma itself. So thank you BioAg for leaving the trichoderma out of this. You might notice in some of those petri dish extracted mycorrhizae products that they're actually not living at all. When you look at the particular species of fungal spore, it doesn't have any guts about it. There's nothing really living inside that petri dish. This isn't the case with all companies, however it is the, it is the case with the majority. This, however, because it is extracted from living plants, it is much more living and a lot more diverse populations of mycorrhizae fungi. In addition to the process of being extracted with live plants, that process is much more expensive, so many companies leave that process out and extract it artificially inside the lab. The amount of fungal spores per gram of material that's in there is much more highly concentrated than other competing products on the market. This also leads me to the next point of what exactly is mycorrhizae? Mycorrhizae is a fungal spore that is going to bond to the roots. So picture roots that penetrate into the, into the soil, more specifically the, the main tap root. What the mycorrhizae fungi is going to do is it needs a direct root contact. So when it bonds to those roots, it links up to the root itself and it actually has a synergistic and a symbiotic relationship with it. What I mean by that is, is the root by itself as well as the fungal spore by itself is not going to have its dominant of a life unless they are together. So when it bonds to the root itself, it immediately tells the roots, send more, 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 more roots, which are in turn feeder roots that's taking up more of the fertilizer. This works in tandem with enzymes because the enzymes are breaking down the food, making the mycorrhizae fungi with their root attached to them much more available to that food. Also, if anything such as root feeding nematodes as well as a root rot type disease tries to enter the root zone, the mycorrhizae fungi species are going to battle it for you. They're going to at least help battle that for you. Much like an immune system for a human, the mycorrhizae as well as other enzymes help immune, help boost the immunity in your plants. The best way that you want to use this product is you actually want to have a container with soil or a soilless media. You want to clear out the section where you're going to put your root ball, sprinkle about a tablespoon worth into the bottom of the root. 
if it's a clone, you might be a little closer to a teaspoon or two, but the most common application is one to two tablespoons. The cool thing about this is it just needs direct root contact. So I always tell people to sprinkle on the zone you're going to drop your plant onto and then back cover with dirt. Um, however, mycorrhizae, because it is living, more specifically the species that are much more dominant and extracted much more expensively, they're highly active. And so they need to be bonded to those roots within 48 hours or unfortunately that species will die. These have luckily been set into a dry dormant state. So once water has activated them, they need that, that's when that 48 hour mark starts. When you're using a molasses or any sugar-based molecule, it's gonna actually allow these species to thrive because that's what they feed off of. In addition to the sugar that you're gonna be adding to your media every once in a while, ideally once a week or maybe every other week, um, you also don't wanna use any chlorine or chloramines in your water. So I highly recommend any water filter, whether it's the Boogie Blue uh, carbon sediment filter that's gonna remove the chlorine, and the chloramines or going as far as the reverse osmosis which will also scrub the water of the chlorine and the chloramines. The idea is the chlorine and chloramines will actually uh, the chlorine and the chloramines will actually wipe out the colonies of mycorrhizae you have in your root zone. Well thanks a lot for logging on to monstergardens.com we hope you have a great outdoor season and happy transplanting. We know that this product right here although you may have tried many mycorrhizae products this one seems to be the most cost effective as well as the most bioactive. Highly recommend it. Thanks again, BioAg. We look forward to your future products. Happy growing, everybody. Watch,